I wanted to play this video because I felt like this video for me encapsulates why I think it's really irrelevant and really unnecessary for anybody to ask anyone for advice about anything, especially when it comes to your career. Advice from people who've made it is somewhat pointless because there's a, you know, there's a survivor, there's a survivor bias. Sometimes when you make it, you don't really understand why you made it. So you're better off spending the time that you would spend asking somebody, hey, how can I be like you? And just going your own path or trying to follow their path and how they made it, as opposed to asking questions. Because more than likely, they don't have any answers for you that are really going to open the doors or that are really going to illuminate things for you and make it clear as to what you should be doing. And one good example of this is this absolute waffle session, this absolute waste of advice from Pharrell Williams to this guy during Paris Fashion Week. This guy rocks up to him wanting to have some advice from Pharrell, wanting to have some sort of insight that might open up some neural pathways that might finally make him realize where he's going wrong in life. And for me, all I hear is pure, unadulterated waffle from Pharrell in this particular clip. Now, I could be wrong, but this is the main reason why I think it's almost unnecessary, almost offensive to ask anybody as successful how they made it because they don't know themselves. And sometimes they have the worst advice ever. Case in point, Pharrell Williams. Don't take it <laughs> do you know where you'd be 400 years ago when he said did, you, did he mean like floating in the ocean if you were a slave that fell off a boat or something is that what he meant 400 years of slavery what what honestly don't get emotional brother i'm hungry i'm trying to make it i've been releasing my shitty brand on instagram getting zero engagement no one's putting any orders through my Shopify. I want to have a creative studio like you. I want to one day be a creative director, a fashion director. I want to one day make music videos. I want to one day work with some of the best artists in the world. How do I get like you? Don't be emotional. Brother, it's all emotional. I care about my work. I'm a creative. I have to be emotional. In order for me to create good work, I have to tap into the emotion. I have to tap into happiness, to hurt, disappointment, glee, you know, surprise heartbreak i have to tap into my emotion how can i not be emotional how can i not take it personally when i see somebody that clearly isn't as good as me making 10 times much more money than me how can i not take it personally when somebody that's just started yesterday is far ahead of me in their career when i'm much older than them how can i not take that seriously emotionally how can i not take that personally what the hell is he talking about what type of waffle advice is this and for me, the really annoying things about people like this, right, is that sometimes I guess they just lose sight of how they got there. Because maybe the best advice for someone like Pharrell to give somebody like that is just, hey, keep doing what you're doing. That's it. Just keep following something that you clearly enjoy. And maybe along the way, you could have the opportunity to take this hobby that you like and turn it into something that you do full time. Maybe that's the best advice. Maybe that's the best advice to give to a creative. Because nowadays, especially with Instagram, because I've noticed myself, ever since I've stopped using Instagram as often, I do sometimes check DMs and shit and go through some stuff, but I'm not on it as much. One thing I've noticed from not using Instagram as much is I don't have as much FOMO as I did in the past. I used to have tons of FOMO. Seeing people doing all these cool shit, seeing all these amazing events happening. And I'd be like, oh my God, I wish I was here. I wish I was there. I wish I was doing this. Bubbity, bubbity, but. But one thing I don't have anymore is FOMO. Another thing I don't have anymore 
is a lack of consistency of or like procrastination in general i feel like my procrastination has gone down a lot but my output has kind of you know uh, improved somewhat and that's because i'm spending less time watching people that right? comparisons are people will joy but comparison also takes up your time comparison is a fee for fucking time and one thing that you can't get back in life is the time time you can't get back it's a non-renewable resource so if i was for l and this guy came up to me and asked me some questions you know what i'm saying to him hey brother just keep plugging away this thing that we do this profession that we're in usually is a calling usually you have this unrequented desire to be creative it's something that sits at the pit of your stomach that you just can't let go Every time that I'm outside somewhere or that I'm on the gym, I'm at the gym, I'm cycling, wherever it may be, and I hear a tune playing in my headphones, I can't help but think of mix ideas. I can't help but think of remixes. Sometimes I'll be walking down the street and I'll see a particular sound, I'll be like, oh shit, that would look incredible on the shirt. I'll be thinking about something, I'm walking down the street, I'll see somebody talk about something, oh shit, that would be a great podcast topic. Sometimes when you're creative, you just can't help but think of these things. And sometimes... It's not necessary to overthink it. Just share whatever you're thinking about. Just share your inspirations. Share your work out there with the public. And nowadays, we have so many amazing platforms, social media platforms, whatever else, content platforms that you can share your interests, share your hobbies with people. And if it then gets to the point where people like it enough that they want to invest in you and you can then take it further and become full-time and do it professionally, amazing. But the fact that you can share it, number one, should be the main thing in my personal opinion just sharing it should be the most important thing it shouldn't matter anything else just the ability to share it should be the thing that should be at the front of your brain but again it can be difficult because you see other people making it professionally who maybe made it a bit more early than you bloody blah 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 another thing that needs to be said as well is that sometimes these careers aren't for you sometimes you have to figure out what is for you in the process of trying to make something work for you that isn't for you sometimes you're going to waste a bunch of time quote unquote doing things and pursuing things that you probably shouldn't be doing but you'll figure out along the way by just being open and plugging away and sometimes the actual cruel cruel nature of the beast is that sometimes for some people it might take them 16 months two months to make it for you it might take you 10 years and you still might not make it so if that's the if that's the case then the practical advice which i've been um saying and preaching about for the longest time and i think it's something that a lot of people don't really take heed to get a full-time job i think way more creatives need to actually get a real job and almost ground themselves in reality and then pursue their creative things that they want to do on the side i think this idea that everybody is going to make it is insane because that isn't true and obviously isn't going to happen so i think some people should be happy with being able to do their hobbies their interests their passions on the side on the side that should be more than enough for most people to be able to express themselves on the side and maybe earn some extra bucks by reviewing collections by maybe showing off their artwork once or twice a year at a gallery that's more than fine but easing the pressure of your creative work and your artistry by having a full-time job is super important i remember when i was coming up and doing my thing in the whole dj scene for a little bit there was this girl that i used to play with again big up natalia she knows who she is and she had a very different point of view she always kind of pushed the idea that you should maybe save up a bunch of money and give yourself a runway of like six months and more so so you work up you work a dead-end job you save a bunch of money and then you give yourself six months to quote unquote make it in your avenue or your profession whether it's design whether it's music whatever it may be and then every six months if it doesn't work out you get another job you go again i personally didn't like that because i felt like it put too much pressure on your creative endeavor and output but in some respects giving yourself that time limit that time frame can maybe be a good thing because it pushes you to try new things I personally think most people should go out there and just get a regular job and pursue their creative output as just a hobby. And then if it pops off on the side as a hobby professionally, fair play. But this idea that everyone can make it is stupid. And the idea that you should take advice from Pharrell at his stage in his career where he has no perspective on how to make it nowadays and essentially he's kind of winning nowadays based on the work that he did like 20, 30 years ago, which is incredible. Don't get me wrong, but if you're really being you know if you're really trying to be nitpicky and shit 
it would be pretty clear to see that Pharrell hyper focused and specified in one particular area that was music became one of the greatest producers in modern music history and then through being very good at doing one thing it opened the doors to many other things because he was a very good music producer suddenly he's become big in fashion big in streetwear big in jewelry big in accessories right big in design overall and a bit of a tastemaker radio presenter podcast producer all these sort of things are opened up because he hyper specified into one particular area became world class at it and then the doors opened if you're really going to be picky and i don't think i don't think at that stage advice is don't be emotional and play the part into it because i'd imagine a lot of those hit records he produced under neptunes a lot of those hit records he produced himself for his own self-titled albums and shit a lot of those were produced with some emotion a lot of those were a response to people maybe saying no you can't sing you can't do this you can't do that and him saying watch i'm going to prove you wrong so this idea that you shouldn't be emotional and not take it personally, it's like, bro, how can I not? This is my life's work. This is what I've always wanted to do since I was a baby. How can I not take this personally? Absolutely terrible advice from one of the, our premier creatives out there, such as Pharrell Williams. But again, should he be surprised? Obviously not. Should he be surprised? Obviously not.